Welcome back. This is going to be a bit of a different video than anything that I've done or will do on this channel. This will be more of a deconstruction rather than a making of. I made this a few years ago when I was frustrated with the Star Wars ship build and I didn't know where to go next. I decided to take on a second project to occupy my time and maybe spur on some creativity. As you saw in the beginning, those were the final turnarounds I shot in my studio, but this video, to me, wasn't quite done yet. I needed to do some sort of making of, but I didn't have any video of this project. I don't even have any pictures of me making this. This was for my own personal enjoyment, so I never recorded anything, and that's pretty stupid of me. Video is literally what I do for a living. So now I'm working backwards trying to make something from nothing. This is me blowing off some dust on there. Hopefully I'm not going to screw this up taking this apart. So let's start deconstructing this thing. Those smoke plumes are just tea lights with cut off push pins hot glued to the bottom. I hot glued some pillow batting around the tea light and hit it with a small misting of black spray paint to give that illusion of burning and fire. And then you click on that tea light and you get that nice glowing flame effect. Uh, those tea lights are a little old, so they maybe don't have the oomph that they once did. I might have to replace those soon. I use those techniques on a couple of different Halloween costumes. I made two of these, as you can see. They're pretty much the same. The second one is just a little smaller than the first one. As I was inspecting this thing, I noticed the cable had some weird paint or chipping or something on it. I was thinking about replacing this with something else anyways. So at some point, I'm probably going to replace it with a guitar string or something like that. But this was supposed to be like the cable that the Sentinels would shoot out of their fingertips. They would use these cables to subdue whoever they were chasing or fighting. There was a little nub at the end of the fingertip, so I was able to drill a hole through that and poke the end of the cable through there. I didn't glue anything in this project, which is nice, so I'm able to deconstruct everything and just pull it apart. As for Colossus, I completely repainted him, and I added in all the weathering and shadowing on his chest and back. I kept all his silver parts silver because you rarely see him not shiny when he's drawn. This toy came with an ab crunch feature. He either could stand upright or crunch slightly forward. It was kind of a pointless feature that they added into this toy. I used plumber's putty before I ever knew what a poxy putty was and I filled in that gap and worked as quickly as I could because plumber's putty sets in about five minutes. I did the best that I could with the minimal tools that I had, and I tried to carve in any details before the putty hardened and became unworkable. I would have had to use a Dremel or a tool like that, which I didn't have at the time, so I had to make do with what I had and work fast. The stomach looks so much better than the back does. I wish I could go back and fix it, but unfortunately, there's not much I can do about it now. Thankfully, his back sits against the wall so I don't have to look at it. In order to affix Colossus to the base, he is supported through his legs with threaded rods. After marking his foot position, I drilled holes through the base and on the underside used small chisels to widen those holes so I could glue in threaded hex nuts in the bottom. I wanted them to sit flush so they wouldn't scratch any surface I put them on. Uh, I did add the felt pads after just for some added protection. Here I'm sliding Colossus off the rods. Holes were drilled through the bottom of his feet all the way up through his calf as far as I could. I kept the rods pretty long so he could stand freely 
without me having to lock his legs in place. Those rods are screwed through the base into the bolts in the bottom. There's also a washer and a nut underneath the rocks to hold them in place so they don't go anywhere. You'll see them once I take off the rock feature. As for Colossus, he was a terrible toy to begin with and always had trouble standing on his own. I had a shelf over my desk at some point and he fell on top of my head. I can tell you that was not a fun time because he's really heavy. The next piece of the puzzle was finding a sentinel hand that I could use. I think I tracked this one down on eBay. This was a thing that you were supposed to mount on your wall. I don't know why you'd want a broken sentinel hand mounted on your wall, but to each their own. This was a little off scale. Ideally, I would have liked to have the proper scaling, but I was working with what materials I had available or could get. I repainted the whole thing because it was not the right color scheme at all. I don't know what that color scheme is. It was always purple and blue, so I made sure that it was that color because this was something I was going to display for me and for me alone, and no one else was gonna see this unless you came over my house. So it had to be right. This was a pretty big detailed paint job for me at the time. I'm really happy with how it came out. I also added a few bits of extra wire coming out of the wrist just to give it a little realism instead of being one piece of molded plastic. I know it's not much, but it gave it a little something. As for basing material, this was not ideal and not what I would have used. I would have liked to use pink foam or orange foam. There's also a green version, but that stuff is less dense. The pink stuff is ideally what I wanted to use, but at the time I couldn't find it. And a buddy of mine suggested that I tried expanding foam. Not the greatest choice and wouldn't have been my first, wouldn't be my last either. It did look cool at the time, or at least I thought it did. I guess it still does, but I went with it anyways. I created a box and filled it with expanding foam, which as you can imagine, poured out everywhere and made a hot mess. I had to figure out how to make it look halfway decent. I took it to a friend who had a table saw and asked him if he could cut it down to the shape of the base plate that I had. After I had my general shape down, I was able to carve out the indentation where the hand would land to make it look like it pushed the ground upwards as it smashed into its final position. I sprayed the base plate down with a glossy black or a semi-gloss black just to give some separation between the flat rock color and the base plate. If I ever were to go back to this project, I would like to go back and fill in all of those gaps in his arm and his shoulder and in his legs to get rid of those pieces that made him look like a toy. As I said before, I didn't have the right tools to do that level of detail on the rest of him. I didn't even have the right tools to do that detail on his stomach and back, but I did the best I could. The other good thing about not locking him into place with glue or putty is that he's still a little poseable, which I do like. Here I was checking out his leg and I forgot that I drilled the hole through so much that the peg that keeps his foot in place doesn't really stay in his calf anymore but as long as I don't take him apart, he still stands fine. Now let's watch me reassemble this thing and hopefully I don't break it. I guess the worst case scenario is if I do break it, I get to remake it. This base is not my favorite, but it was my first, so I'm rolling with it as is. But if I do get the chance to go back, I would like to redo it the right way or we'll call it the right way, with the right materials. Here I even knock off a couple pieces. 
I look at this piece every day when I come downstairs and I'm still very happy with it. Here's me fixing the piece that I just broke off while putting it back together. This is the nature of disassembling something that wasn't intended to be disassembled. Thank you for coming on this very different journey with me, deconstructing one of my old projects. I have a giant list of awesome projects that I can't wait to create and make videos for and post up here. So I would love for you to come and join me on those journeys as well. Please like and subscribe if you like this video and want to see more. Thank you for stopping by.